So raising capital, the industry, secrets of the uh, $17 million ILIO campaign. What do we see in the industry in Q&A? 600,000 businesses created every year in the US. 325 raised venture capital. Fraction, right? For every one entrepreneur that raises VC, 300 raised from family and friends, and another 450 pull money from savings, credit cards, 401k. Banks have been lending less and less for the past 30 years. And so equity crowdfunding seems like a viable option. And I think it is. Uh, the industry's grown, and equity crowdfunding is a growing piece of the industry at large. So Elio Motors just concluded their uh, campaign. They raised $17 million. It's a little old. It's about 6,500 investors is the final number. The average investment was $2,600. Five months of test the waters marketing, two months of a live offering. So this is where I'm just gonna break it down for people. So equity crowdfunding. What is equity crowdfunding? It's an exercise in digital marketing, period. You're driving traffic to a page and you're converting a percentage of page views to investors. 650,000 people viewed the Elia Motors campaign page. Do you know how much work it took to get 650,000 people to a website? You think you get that from a press release? You think you get that from a New York Times story? It 10,000 hits. Okay, so we need another 640,000 a ton of marketing. So I'm going to talk about three elements of a successful campaign. This is actually the most important because if you miss the story, the marketing is irrelevant. You have to tell the story of your business in a way that elicits an emotional response from your target audience. Your target audience could be your customers, it could be fans, it could be friends and family, it could be complete strangers. The themes you have to communicate in these campaigns are ownership, participation, and empowerment. Those are winning themes in the realm of equity crowdfunding. This is not about your product. It's not about your service. The story needs to transcend your business. It has to be bigger than your business itself. This is not a Kickstarter campaign feature benefit. It's about the vision. Paul Elio used to walk into a press conference and say, my name's Paul Elio, CEO of Elio Motors, and our claim to fame is that we're designing a vehicle that's gonna get 84 miles a gallon and sell for just $6,800. That was the pitch. So when we met Paul, we said, Paul, we're gonna have to flip that message on its head if you want this campaign to work. The new message is, I'm Paul Elio, CEO of Elio Motors, and my vision is to alter the course of transportation. We want to change the way people commute to and from work. We're going to reduce dependence on foreign oil, and we're going to bring jobs back to the country by developing and manufacturing a vehicle that gets 84 miles a gallon and sells for just $1,600. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So the story is absolutely critical. Then we produce the story. That's the video, which is your primary sales tool, and it's the campaign page. Now, the theory is that crowdfunding is the modern infomercial. Your story is told top to bottom. Somebody needs to hit your website, and without reading a single word, know exactly what your company does, why you're different, how you're going to make money, how you're going to return money for investors, and why they need to take action right now. You need to figure out how to do that with less words. This is a visual story. Snapchat, Instagram, we live in an era of visual storytelling. The visuals are really important. Once you get that down, you've got to market the hell out of your campaign. Social media marketing, PR and blog outreach, email marketing, advocate marketing, innovative digital marketing, influencer marketing, experiential marketing, events marketing, and paid media. All of those activities were in scope for Elio Motors. And they're in scope for every issuer whose campaign we take on. 
Because again, if you want to raise millions of dollars from the crowd, you have to drive hundreds of thousands of page views to your campaign so people can experience your story. So we'll talk about a couple of these activities. PR and blog outreach. Issuing a press release is not enough, okay? You need a tremendous PR effort to be successful. Our team <coughs> typically contacts 1,000 journalists and bloggers for every campaign. It's a custom list. We assemble a number of key assets during the planning phase. I'm just gonna rattle them off, and we typically do two months of planning. But granted, we assign eight people to every project. We spin out the story, we spin out the video, the page, a press kit, a press release, a digital marketing plan, and a paid media plan. Bloggers, you need dozens of press hits in a campaign to generate meaningful traffic. Not one story, two stories, dozens of press hits. Email marketing. You need to really <coughs> go deep on email marketing. If you have customers, your goal is to convert your customers into investors. And don't be fooled. The best campaigns are marketing to customers and fans. The same rules of gravity apply to equity crowdfunding as they do in a VC meeting. You don't go in and pitch a VC on an idea anymore. You don't raise money like that. You're not going to raise money from the crowd on an idea either. It's unlikely. The best campaigns, you're marketing to your customers and your fans. Elio had spent years building up a fan base because they couldn't raise the capital to produce the vehicle. So they had 80,000 emails and a quarter of a million Facebook fans, and it paid off for them. Social media marketing. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are the obvious plays that are in scope for us. How about Pinterest? YouTube, Snapchat, Vine, depends on who your target audience is, who your customers are, but you need to have really aggressive social media marketing. Influencer marketing, this is really key. Most companies don't understand it or they miss the opportunity to take advantage of it. How do you get somebody with an audience to deliver the message for you? You partner with an influencer. So what we did for Elio, we contacted a thousand people on YouTube that had 50,000 subscribers or more. We created a once in a lifetime experience to fly them out to LA, put them up in a hotel, and gave them the ability to test drive the one and only Elio prototype, with the GoPros and cameras in tow. Some of them did a two minute video, some of them did a 10 minute video, some of them was just a car under the hood, some interviewed Paul Elio, founder and CEO. The content produced by the influencers for this campaign resulted in millions of impressions, video views. The amount of brand equity created for Elio through influencer marketing was tremendous. Because at some point, you need other people to go out and propagate your message. You need people that are credible, that have the following, to deliver the message for you. We didn't pay a dollar for these people. They wanted the content. That's what they do, they make YouTube videos. We paid for their flights and hotels. The travel and expense was about 7,500 bucks. Yes? How big was the budget for all the influencers coming? Well, again, we didn't pay the influencers to create the content. But somebody had to pay the So I'll cut to the chase. My opinion, we take it with a grain of salt. For every million dollars you want to raise in equity crowdfunding, $50,000 marketing budget. Someone calls me once a day. Darren, we're gonna do a $20 million campaign. Great, let's talk about the million dollars you've set aside for marketing. You didn't think it was gonna be easy, did you? If you could have raised $20 million, you would have done it by now. You think this is gonna be done on a shoestring budget? No, you can't. If you're the company in here that has a quarter of a million customers, you probably don't need that budget. But the average business raising capital, Title III, Reg A, $50,000 for every million dollars you want to raise, on average. And if you guys find somebody that can do it for less, send them my way. I'll, I'll acquire their company right now. Yes? You said a great thing at lunch yesterday that about saving the equity by, by using the crowd. Sure. So 
our opinion, having worked on campaigns like this and some of the other more notable campaigns in the reggae space, is that equity crowdfunding is inherently hard to do, especially at the reggae level, right? You've heard there's accountants, attorneys, and you need specialized resources in every area. Jillian, Mark, they're crowdfunding attorneys. You need people like that. I disclose, automating, automating a lot of the legal, super valuable, but it's still really hard to do. And my opinion is that it's not any easier to do this, Reg A Title III, than it is to go get somebody to cut you a check for $5 million, raise money from a VC, get a million dollar loan, private equity. It's the same type of hard. It's not a shortcut, guys, straight up. It's not a quick path to cash. But the reason you choose this type of hard is because you, as the issuer, get to set your own terms. Nobody's going to tell you how much your business is worth. You're not going to give up 60% control, ownership of your company by taking in $3 million. You retain control, you retain ownership. You're not giving up a board seat, preferred stock, or voting rights. That's why you decide to go down this path. Not because it's easy or cheap. And the other observation is that your cost of capital in these campaigns is an unknown until it's done. You don't know what it's going to cost you. It's like going to Vegas. Party. <laughs> Snake eyes. Could be 5%, 10%, 20%. You don't know until it's done. This is not an investment bank, right? More often than not. The reason you'd be willing to pay 10, 15, 20% to raise this money, again, you set the terms. Paul Elio raised $17 million at a $300 million valuation. He would not be able to do that anywhere else. Nowhere else. So it's not easy, it's not cheap. There may be exceptions to that 50,000 per million dollars, but that's a baseline. Experiential marketing. Events, we had a big event for Elio. We got a writer from Forbes to come out, covered the campaign on launch, got us off to a good start. Digital marketing. This is not necessarily social media marketing. A Reddit AMA chat, product hunt campaigns, thunderclap. These are things most people aren't familiar with. Hacker news. You need to find the audiences where they are online. And you need to either have a team or work with a team that knows where those audiences are. Paid media. I can't stress this enough. You need a substantial paid media budget to drive hundreds of thousands of people to your campaign. How do we allocate paid media? 80% of our budgets go to Facebook ads against what's called lookalike audience. When you're talking about unaccredited investors, there's no better place to advertise than Facebook. So what, what we do is we take the first 500 investors in a Reg A campaign. We get the emails, we load them into Facebook. Facebook matches them up against the people that own the profile, does an analysis of the demographics and taste profiles of that baseline audience, creates a lookalike audience, and says here's another 1 million, 2 million people that have the same characteristics as those 500. And then we'll buy $100,000 of Facebook ads against it. And we'll A-B <coughs> test 12 to 24 versions of art and copy, two dozen. We're optimizing for title, image, copy. And over time, the more investors you have in your campaign, the better that process works. Your cost per acquisition decreases. If you have 500 investors, your cost per acquisition might be here. If you have 5,000 investors, it's going to go down. The more information we provide Facebook, the better targeting we can do. We do sponsored stories, sponsored newsletters, all types of things. But you need a substantial media budget. So in our contracts, for a Reg A deal, if we're bidding on a campaign, <coughs> client wants to raise $5 million, and we submit a proposal for a quarter million, 5%, half of that budget goes to paid media. The other half is services, and then there's a budget for video production. So if you're thinking about a Title III campaign, and your goal is to raise a million dollars, I would suggest a $50,000 marketing budget as a baseline. Paid media, equity crowdfunding, and I apologize, it's blurry, but there's nothing more powerful than converting your customers into investors. They are the most powerful brand ambassadors you could ever have as a business. 
Those people are now literally and emotionally invested in the outcome of your company for as little as 500 bucks. It's incredible. Elio has 6,500 brand ambassadors. All those people have a thousand friends on Facebook. Imagine the amplification that company has to get messages out. They have an army of people they can task to help grow the business. Set your own terms, that's the number one value point for equity crowdfunding. No VC interference, kind of the same thing. I'm not saying there's no value in venture capital, there is. I think there's a way that equity crowdfunding and VCs coexists. Build brand equity. When you market these campaigns, the capital raising is a side effect of the brand equity that is created for the company. And that's not the other way around. You create brand equity, you create awareness for your offering, and some people decide to invest. So success breeds success. When you create brand equity, you have 30 press hits, you have half a million page views. Guess what happens? People start calling you. Paul Elio, Dave Brody, XTI. These guys can't keep up with the inbound interest their campaigns have generated. Why? Because they've been in Forbes, Inc., Popular Science, Popular Mechanics, done a Reddit AMA that's been viewed a quarter of a million times. The brand equity breeds success, and in success, you mitigate risk for the next investor. And a lot of these companies, again, are now talking with billion dollar investors, high net worth, because they've done a really good job creating awareness for their offerings. So Steve Sadler from Allegiancy, he kind of nailed it. Reg A, it's not cheap, it's not easy, it's going to be painful, but there could be a great reward for those who do it right. And we're all hoping that Title III is faster, easier, more efficient, cheaper. And products like George's, I think, are no-brainers. You know, that's the future of the industry. Where the industry can benefit from automation, automation should be applied. And unfortunately, you can't always automate the marketing strategy. You can't automate the creative, the storytelling. So there is a lot of boots in the ground, you know, human involvement, human touch that has to go into some of these campaigns. So that's all I've got. Any questions? <laughs> Someone's calling. Yes. I would put $25,000 into paid media. I would put $10,000 into the video. And the rest is going to be paid for someone to manage the campaign. But usually half of that budget should be paid media. You want a good video, it's worth paying for the right video, right? You don't need a million dollar video, but you have to be credible, right? If you're gonna go out and raise a million million dollars, you need to appear to have the credibility and the gumption of a million dollar campaign. And the video can make or break you. So we would recommend a five, ten thousand dollar budget for the video. Yes. How long uh, from the initial meeting to set up a campaign, you know, what time frame you we we turn them out in sixty days. Now if you're doing it on your own it might take longer. Um, and again we assign a team of eight people. What we like in Reg A, by the way, two months of planning, one month test the waters, and then go into your live offering. I think there's value in test the waters. You're soliciting indications of interest, you're building your fan base, you're messaging those people, you're building up anticipation and excitement for 30 days, you're telling them it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then boom, we're authorized, here's how you become an investor. They, they have said that, um, on the that it was five months of testing the water. Is that because it was kind of the first one and turning It was five months because Elio was not entirely ready. They didn't have the right team ready to go. They used an SEC attorney that was in-house, brothers, mothers, cousins, sisters. It was a process. On day one, they were at seven, eight million dollars in interest, and it would have been ideal for Elio to have filed. They hadn't filed, they didn't have the audit and financials. They were not prepared for the success. So then the timing of this is, we would file first then, like kind of in that process, like when you file your, like work with Joanne, file and start with you? Correct, you okay. should do them in parallel. Yeah. You have one person or team doing the marketing planning, one doing the legal. Last question, yes. Well, yeah, have you ever turned down a company because you thought, no matter what you do, the product is just so weak? All the time. 
We turn down 80%, 90% of the deals that come our way. We turn down deals with companies wanting to pay us cash. If I don't believe in the business, my partner doesn't believe in the business, if we wouldn't invest personally, we're not taking on the deal. Do you know if any of those have gone on to succeed though? I'm not sure. I think that's it guys. I know we have other speakers. Gene? Just one quick question. Yeah. Email campaigns. Most of the time when you use these email providers like MailChimp and House of Contact, you get a 12 to 18 percent open rate. Sure. Uh, I've been talking to somebody that does, they send an email every couple of seconds directly to their server in the software program. Do you ever use anything like that? We use a number of different email marketing tools, social media, growth as a service tools. Um, we use Yesware for PR and blog outreach to see who's opening emails. And, and every company is different. Some companies have a million users and they get a 5% open rate. Some companies have 1,000 customers, 80% open. So the issuer has to gauge the value of their customer base. What kind of open rate do you get with an automated program? I don't know that it's it's the automation that does it. I think it's the quality of the base. And I'm sorry, guys. Um, available outside or after, but I want to let other speakers go. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you.